Hi, I'm Alison Tafe. Welcome back to the Ice Kitchens once again for our Master Chef series with our guest chefs we've invited in. So I'm really happy and pleased to invite and see Mr. Russell Armstrong with us today. Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure, Al. Driving all the way down to see us. It's great. And um, Russell's the master of sources. So like all our chefs, they have um, great abilities in every area of the kitchen. But we like to try and get people that specialise in particular things. And Russell's great at everything in the kitchen, but he's very well known for making sauces and yep. stocks and things like that. So you guys better keep watching because we're very lucky to have Russell with us this afternoon. So I'm sure you're going to enjoy. Thank you for coming. It's great to welcome you to our kitchens. Pleasure. And have fun, guys, and take notes. And uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy this session. It'd be great. Okay, so I've been actually um, pretty classically trained and uh, in stocks and sauces. I worked for a long time at uh, the Connaught Hotel in London, Mayfair, and uh, learnt uh, under the tutelage of uh, Michel Baudin. <coughs> Very sort of French-based uh, sauces, and um, to this day I, uh, so I still believe in, in the way um, I learnt. First off and foremost, mirepoix. So obviously you probably learnt what a mirepoix is. Traditionally or generally speaking, uh, it's a, um, a large dice or a smaller dice of root vegetables, i.e. carrots, you know, celery, so forth and so on. But into that we also use fennel and um, I use parsnips as well, especially for some of the beef sauces, which I find you know, gives it a beautiful earthy flavour. Just remember always, the first thing to do with your vegetables, make sure you wash them properly, okay? Same with your herbs. On the front here, we have some parsley, we have some sweet marjoram, which I love to put in red wine jus. We have some tarragon, which we will um, be doing with the uh, Bernay sauce. Thyme and everything else. So first I've washed them in very cold uh, ice water, spun with a salad spinner to get the excess water and then they're ready to go. So just let me tell you about sources quickly. Basically any our base stocks or foundation stocks are veal, white and brown, chicken, white and brown, and fish. Um, everything else are derivatives of that. So in terms of my philosophy about sources and stocks, I build stocks. So if I was going to do, say, for instance, a roast uh, lamb jus, I would make a roast lamb stock. And I had to have roasted bones and trimmings and mirepoix, nicely coloured. So colours flavour, let's just remember. But you can go too far, and if it's burnt, it's bitter. So this side of that is always where, where we're looking for. So if I was going to do a roast lamb stock, I would use all those lamb trimmings in the pot and I would put veal stock on top of it. So it's not then grabbing for a base flavour, it's fulfilling a flavour and delivering a profile. My sources are the same. I learned how to make um, FDVL, which is Fond de Vaux Lié, Lié being thickened. It does have a, a very, very minimal roux base. So if I was to do, say, 50 litres of Fond de Lié, I may use 200 grams of flour and 200 grams of butter. And it's braised for about three and a half hours in the oven. So it's a very long, slow process. And I vow and declare, you can't taste um, flour. What I do find with Fond de Lié is it gives the sauces more depth it helps me to lie or thicken a sauce, and it acts as a like a um, a catalyst to grab a hold of fl flavors. So, for instance, if I was making, say, for instance, a tarragon lamb jus, I would be putting the stock and and onto the lamb trimmings, and then uh, a little bit of fond de lie, cooking it out, and then uh, finishing off with some tarragon, and you'll find that the tarragon is so prominent and so full of flavour. Um, it's not trying to um, build up flavour. We're adding another layer, like a good red wine, or a good wine in actual fact, white or red. We're looking for 
flavor. We're looking for profile. We're looking for layers and depth of um, flavors. Okay, so quickly on to that, we've decided to do a, a couple of base sources. Um, my red wine jus, which I do all the time. A black pepper and cognac jus, um, which is always great with beef. Um, also very good with duck as well. And then uh, we'll do a, a couple of emulsion sauces. So a bernaise, you know, egg yolks, you need to have a reduction. First thing you need to have is a, a reduction of shallots, vinegar, and white wine, and a couple of other things. So the difference between a Bur Blanc and a, and a Bernay slash Hollandaise, Hollandaise without tarragon, um, Bernays with tarragon. So the difference between uh, those two, Hollandaise, Bernays, and a Bur Blanc, is the difference of the, the quantities of, of white wine and vinegar. So vinegar in a Bernays and a Hollandaise, two to one. Two vinegar, one white wine. Uh, in terms of a Bourbon, exactly the opposite. So two white wine, one vinegar. I always like to finish my Bourbon because not mm, very often um, we're using it for uh, seafood or fish, um, sometimes vegetables. Um, so I'd like to finish with a little squeeze of lemon juice as well. I've already started the uh, Bernays reduction. So in here I have one litre of uh, white wine vinegar, 500 gram, uh, mils of um, white wine, some cracked white pepper, some thyme, and about 300 grams of finely chopped shallots. Okay, And reduced down to there's almost no liquid left. Uh, so, I will start the um, uh, Beurre Blanc reduction and just get it happening so then I can move on to a couple of the jus with you. So, tarragon vinegar went into the Bernays, into my um, Beurre Blanc, my shallots, a little bit of thyme, bay leaf, and some freshly cracked white pepper. Not too much, because you are going to reduce it, it's going to come out and, um, in strength and flavor. Also, with the um, Bernays reduction, I've also used fresh um, tarragon in the reduction and some dried tarragon, um, which I think just gives it a little bit more oomph and, and final flavor. So I'm going to look, put a little bit into um, the sauce when I'm making it as well. So shallots, um, bay leaf, thyme, I have here, I think that was 500 white wine. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was 250 white wine, 125 of white wine vinegar. And now we're going to put it on to start reducing. Okay. So while that's reducing... I'll look at both the uh, emulsion sources in a moment. I think we might move on to some of the jus. Okay, so first one is a red wine jus. And again, just to make sure um, the whole process isn't going to be two days long, um, I've already started with a red wine reduction, which is on the stove over there. I'll grab in a minute. Basically, I've, uh, I've got about uh, five litres of red wine. Uh, I've got some black peppercorns, um, some thyme, some sliced shallots, a little bit of mirepoix, uh, a little bit of garlic, and now I'm reducing it. So you don't have to do that. In a commercial kitchen, it's probably best to have um, to save the whole length of the process. Okay. So... First off, we'll do the red wine jus. And what I've done here is I have my red wine, some mushrooms, some mirepoix, some dried mushrooms. So this is basically called forest air mix, which is basically uh, mushrooms of the forest. Some beef trimmings. Into the, uh, the dried mushrooms, 
I put some boiling stock and some boiling red wine just to start to soften them up and start the process as well. Okay, so nice hot pan. We'll just let that heat up for a little bit. Then we're going to put our mirepoix in. Um, nice colour, uh, straight into our pot. Um, trimmings, the same, straight into our pot after they've got nice colour. Into this one, I put a little bit of black pepper, not too much. I don't want it too dominant. Um, and then we'll deglaze with some red wine and some veal stock and reduce. Um, then uh, once it's pretty much our desired consistency, we'll add some FDVL, Fond du um, just to give it some body and um, bring out those beautiful um, meat flavours. So the uh, Burb Long reduction is reducing. My pan is on for my um, mirepoix trimmings. So a little bit of mirepoix, a little bit of garlic, and I'm going to want nice colour. Okay, while it's sautéing, I'm going to start preparing the Bernays sauce. The reduction is there. What I need then is some egg yolks. I need a bain-marie, which I have, um, some egg yolks and the reduction, some of the reduction. I don't want the reduction hot, so it's been off for a little bit. I'm going to include some people Some people pass everything out of the reductions, like shallots, uh, tarragon, and everything else. Um, I'm a great believer of maybe leave the stalks and stems in there, um, but I want the shallots in my Bernays sauce. Okay, so we're getting some nice colour on the mirepoix. Probably for the amount of mirepoix I've got here, I could have used probably a smaller pan, but this is the colours. These are the colours we want. And then mushroom as well. Again, nice colour. I want some nice colour on that garlic as well. Bring out those flavours. Okay, so my trimmings, my beef trimmings. Again, still looking for nice color. Once I've got some nice color here, I'm going to then deglaze with some red wine and then put it into my pot, which is just magically appeared. <laughs> Okay, so you can have a look and see some of the nice mirepoix colours. Nice colour on the meat. Obviously, colour, flavour. Now, at this point, I'll glaze this red wine. Now, you could without having to make a red wine reduction, just add more red wine or more red wine to the pot. But I really am wanting to just expedite this process a little bit. Now, it's very important at this point to reduce the red wine to a glaze before you add the stock. Don't be tempted to bung it all in now. You won't get the same desired effect. You see the uh, Beurre Blanc reduction is about as far as it probably needs to go now. 
Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Okay, this is going really well and really fast. So the red wine is happening. As soon as it gets to uh, the desired point, I will probably grab some of the red wine reduction just to bring out, bring, give it a little bit more oomph. So as you can see, with the red wine reduction, there's not a lot left. Maybe a litre and a half uh, from six litres of, of red wine. Um, so in... Just to give it a little bit of a, um, a boost, so it doesn't take so long. And then uh, we'll add veal stock. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to start the same process with for the cognac and black pepper. This time I'm going to, once my mirror pie has got a nice color, I'm going to add a good amount of black pepper and they're the flavors we want. So what I tend to do with um, spirits and, and um, liqueurs, um, if I was to make an orange sauce, a savory orange sauce, I would probably deglaze with orange juice, reduce, and then finish off with maybe something like Grand Mania for a duck or, or something like that. Um, in terms of brandy or cognac, so I'll deglaze with brandy, there's not much point in using something that's very expensive just to burn away the alcohol. But it's important that you finish with a very good cognac. And you're probably only talking about one nip, a nip and a half, to maybe two, three litres of sauce. Again, that's what the FTVL helps suspend those flavours within the sauce and so they don't dissipate. Okay, so this is my red wine juice, and this, as we saw before, <coughs> is our veal stock. The red wine had completely reduced, just about to burn, not quite. So now I'm going to reduce the stock mirepoix trimmings and the red wine reduction. That'll reduce by at least half, and then I will probably, um, then I'll add a little fond de Lié, and then we'll finish it off together. At the end, I'll probably, if it's not quite thick enough, uh, I lié, or thicken, or finish thickening, should I say, with some arrowroot. Um, you could use corn flour, I don't like the texture or the finish that um, corn flour gives, but arrowroot or potato flour is a nice finish without too many complications. So again, just remember, mirepoix, mushrooms, garlic, nice colour. Then we'll add the trimmings, the black pepper, probably before the trimmings. We want to uh, sort of saute, roast the black pepper. Um, to get it away from any bitterness, we just want the flavour. And then instead of deglazing with red wine, we're going to deglaze glaze with brandy. Okay, as you can see, my sauce is happening here fairly fast. And uh, let's just have a... I think what I find with young chefs today, more than anything else, is they don't taste, or they don't taste enough. You must taste the whole process. A little bit more, then we'll add the fond de lié. So into our pan, mirepoix, some garlic. There's a couple of parsley stalks, which uh, is always good. And a few mushrooms. Now, don't forget the dried mushrooms. So these are the soaked dried mushrooms. I want some nice mushroom flavour. And this is the mushrooms that we steeped um, and with some red wine and some stock. And I've just added to my red wine jus. 
because I want that beef mushroom predominant flavor. You can see the color of the red wine in the trimmings and everything else as it's been reducing. That's what we want. Starting to colour. Let's get a little bit more flavour, colour. Okay, so now from the red wine, I'm just going to add some of the Fond du Lier. My base sauce, don't forget, this base sauce has been cooking for maybe four to five hours. And it's a double sauce because the uh, veal stock it's made from was also cooked for eight hours. Something I've been doing recently now, traditionally, you know, um, obviously a, a, a fish stock only cook it for 20 minutes, and then you must pass it. Uh, after that, it becomes bitter, um, and some of the things that come out of the bones after that point um, are very unpleasant. Okay, so Mirapai's colouring, it's all happening here. I have some nice trimmings. And at this point, I'm going to put the black pepper in just make sure there's enough oil or ghee, whatever you're using, so it doesn't burn, but it sautés. Okay, and we want the, the nice heat of the pepper to be released. Okay, so this is going, this is at a point where it's going too fast now. I want to start to simmer, nice and slowly. Give myself a little bit of time so I can finish everything properly. Okay. So I'm going to saute. Um, and I'm going to deglaze white wine. This is a really nice um, Balmdine um, wine, in fact. Um, I think in the last, you know, in the last two to 10, 15 years, uh, our wine industry in Queensland has really come of age. There's some cracking wines out of Stanthorpe and surrounding areas, especially fortifieds. I think there's some, there's some great fortifieds. So, brandy, deglaze. White wine. And the same. Same as for the red wine, the red wine jus. Now we need to reduce the wine before we start adding the stock. Also, I'll put here some of the, the uh, dried mushroom liquor and some of our dried mushrooms. I don't want it as predominant um, per se, as the red wine. Um, but I do want that um, body of the mushrooms in there. Okay, so this one, reducing. Let's have a little taste. That is so complex. So many layers in there. I think also, the other thing I find young chefs today, apart from not tasting enough, is not seasoning enough. Be careful, you can't take it out, but you do need to have it there. I think it could have just a little bit more base sauce. I'm going to add a little bit more 
stock. And it's almost time to finish our jus. I'll turn it up a little bit. So we can finish it. Now, what I do like to add into red wine jus is a little bit of sweet margarine. I don't know, it's something I've been doing for a while. Um, and I just think that um, sweet margarine not oregano, obviously it's the same family, but um, a very different finish. Sweet margarine, for the sake of the name, is actually sweeter, but it's just the, the flavour and the perfume that I want to permeate this sauce. So a lot of my cooking as well, I've done a lot of Asian cooking in the past, and what I did learn from Asian cooking is the aromatics, a lot of aromatics and herbs are plunged at the end, releasing the oils in the herbs and imparting that flavor into the sauce. So I have adopted that in my own philosophy or practice of making sauces. So if you do need our root, and I'm just going to add a tiny, tiny little bit, then just a little bit of water, make a slurry, and then add to your boiling sauce, it'll thicken immediately. Be careful. Especially if you're using our root with a cream sauce. It reacts and thickens cream sauces far stronger than a jus. Okay, so often I tell my chefs now, at this point, I want to see the consistency of the sauce. I quite often put it on a plate and I want to see the color. So I think the consistency is good. Perhaps a little thick. So, adjusting now with a little stock. I let it come back to the boil. I can just taste and smell that marjoram. It's just beautiful. And the red wine. Okay, so now it's time for passing. Usually I have what they call a bullion strainer, which is like a conical sieve. Very similar to this one, except very fine. So what I'll do is I'll use this coarse sieve. I'll squeeze all the mirepoix and my trimmings. I want all the flavor out of it. Okay, so as you can see now too, our wine has reduced. So it's now time for stock. We will reduce it by half or thereabouts. Okay, so this is the other thing I say to all my guys as well. Rubber spatula. It's another thing people don't do. They just pour it out. There's a half a portion of sauce there. You do that 10 times in a week, there's five portions of sauce. Um, in our economic climate, we have to be as clever as we can. You need to squeeze. You want everything that you can get. I keep on saying to my guys, you keep pushing, keep squeezing, until nothing's coming out again. So you're wanting a little bit of the garlic in there. You're wanting some of the mirepoix. You want to squeeze those trimmings, which are actually ha holding a lot of the red wine flavor. In fact, probably at least half the flavor is in the third part of passing a sauce. 
Okay. So, this is our finished sauce. I mean, people sort of say, oh, you know, it's all, all too thick, it's all too heavy. It's actually not. And because Sean's a teacher, I think it's up to him. He can tell me what he thinks is best. Beautiful shimmer on the sauce. Now, what I want to do with that is I want to pass it in through a fine sieve now. Just nice and gently to take away all that sediment. And we can even just pass it straight back in to this pot. Okay, so we have a nice fine sieve. And this time, we're not going to squeeze. We're going to pass our sauce. We want that sediment left behind. We want it nice and clean. And this time, now that it's finished, Now that it's finished, Sean's going to be the, the official taste tester. And we'll see if he can pick up those nuances of the red wine and the sweet marjoram and the beef flavor, dominant beef flavor. I think that was a pass. Okay, so this one's coming down nicely, a little bit further to go. Um, don't forget we have our... our, our um, one thing I did actually do like to, to add into my black pepper sauce, just for a little bit more body, is a few black pep uh, green peppercorns. I don't want them overtaking the flavour. I still want cognac and black pepper. If you think when you're tasting this and you think, you know, I'm just not, I'm not getting enough um, black pepper, then pan fry a little bit of black, crushed black pepper and add it too. So I can show you that very quickly. If we don't think it's enough, Okay, tiny little bit of oil, not too much. And now I'm gonna put some, a little bit more black pepper in there because I don't think it's strong enough. But it's very important that you actually cook it, cook it out. You remember we put it in with our mirepoix. And uh, okay, so again, don't forget, taste. Taste the progress. <laughs> well, <coughs> I actually think, I'll just show you the black pepper. So I'm just sauteing it. I'll, I'll uh, throw in a bit of brandy, but I don't think it needs any more. I've just tasted the sauce. Obviously it's got a little bit further to go, more stock, more base sauce, so maybe. But at this point, I don't think it needs any more. Okay. So if you do do this, don't just bung it straight in. Maybe too much. Put it in a small container and then just add a spoon, check it, taste it, add another spoon if you think it needs more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now leave it so that if it does need a little bit more, when we put our more stock and our FDVL in, then I'll decide whether it needs some more. Okay. I think the other nice thing uh, with, um, with cognac and black pepper is time. So at the moment I'll put a little bit in, but I'm going to put a good bit in right at the end. Because I want those oils from the thyme to come out. 
cut. Okay, yeah, tasting good. Not sure it needs more pepper though. So, my base, FTVL. Again, I'm not going to just bung it all in. I let it see. I'm going to come back to the boil, taste, check. And if that's where we want to be, that's where we want to be. Don't forget, right at the end, I'll plunge a little bit more thyme in and some cognac. Kindly supplied by uh, Giraween, I think. As I said before, Queensland are making some, not only some decent wines now, but some um, great fortified brandy. Right, so next thing is Bernays. So I have my Bernays reduction, and we need some egg yolks and clarified butter. So it's an emulsion of fat which is the egg yolks and the butter and the liquid which can be a little uh, problematic from time to time. Recent years I've, I've quite often uh, add a not even a tip of a teaspoon of xanthan gum, which helps to uh, bind uh, oils and liquids. But I'm not going to do that. I'll just show you the classic way. So good. Okay. Don't forget, tasting. Look at your colours. Check the seasoning. Consistency is pretty good. So I always like to be coating, but not too heavy. Just enough. So I think this is enough. I'm tasting. I think it's not too bad. But I think perhaps just Just a spoonful more pepper. And some cognac. Needs a little bit of salt. I don't think it needs leaving at all. So no need for the arrow. A bit of brandy. Uh, a bit of cognac, I should say. In my time, i just give it a couple of minutes. I just want those oils to be released and to permeate the sauce. Okay, so again, we'll pass through the core sieve uh, and then into a fine sieve to finish. Again, don't forget the rubber spatula. <coughs> it's probably one third of a portion of sauce there. And again, we need to squeeze all you can see there's no obviously there's no red wine, so there's no red tinges. But we need to squeeze until nothing comes out. Extract everything you can, or as much as you can, from the trimmings. And once again, nice and softly, Nice and softly 
just to take all that sediment away. So now, Sean's going to taste again. I think it's a little bit light in colour, but not bad for a cognac sauce. And what we're looking for, so the consistency is pretty good. Mm, could be a little bit thicker, but I think it's coating, which is nice. What we want to do is as minimum, as light as possible, with as much powerful flavour and layers of flavour. So what we're looking for here is the beef behind everything else, the brandy, the white wine, and the thyme that we plunged into the end. So here we go. Critique number one. Okay, so moving from the two jus, um, we're going to move on to the emulsion sauces. Uh, one, the beer blanc. I add a little bit of cream in the, in the base, and then I monte a whole butter um, into the um, beer blanc. Um, and obviously the beer blanc means white butter. Um, Bernays, same as holidays, basically, uh, except it's strongly flavoured with tarragon. Um, traditionally used for meat dishes, but it's great with lots of different things. Uh, sauce foyot is Bernays with um, freshly chopped tarragon and glace de viande, which is a beef glaze or a veal glaze. Okay, so as we had before, this is the Bernays reduction, which I had already made. I'm going to just put a little pinch of um, dried tarragon. I just want that beautiful flavour to really permeate. I think with the Hollandaise and Bernays, I think the, uh, the things to remember uh, that you're uh, emulsifying liquid and fat together. So fat in, in terms of the, um, uh, the clarified butter, but also um, yolks are, are a fat as well. Um, and liquid as in the reduction, which is basically vinegar, shallots, and white wine. Okay, so we have here um, some egg yolks. The important thing here is that everything needs to be about the same temperature. So these egg yolks have been out for a while, so they're room temperature. The clarified butter, it's warm. Uh, and we're going to warm up the sabion over hot water. Doesn't need to be going this fast. Simply needs to be warm to warm through the sabion. When I was working at uh, Suncorp Stadium uh, on one of the menus for one of the game days, um, it had Bernays. And which meant that we had to make about 15 litres each time. Uh, that's when your arm gets really, really sore. Okay, but same principle. Everything needs to be about the same temperature. Not too hot, not too cold. Emulsify. This, like a lot of uh, dessert as well, um, Patabon, which is uh, whipped egg yolks drizzled with softball sugar, which makes a great glaze. Also makes, is the base for uh, a lot of souffles, iced souffles or parfaits. Okay, so now starting to warm up. Don't let it get too hot if you have to take it off. Then, always a good idea to have somebody else, a buddy, that will pour for you. If not, this is the easiest way. No, no, it's okay. This is the easiest way. Just put your cloth down, okay, which holds the bowl, because somewhere along the line, you're going to have to do it yourself. Bit like a mayonnaise, 
I guess. And quite often I use an immersion blender. Okay, so it still tastes a bit yolky. I'm going to add a little bit of liquid and want some seasoning. Nice bit of milk pepper. And the thing to do with uh, your Bernays you don't want egg yolks, you want a nice enriched sabion. And to finish, okay, so the consistency is good. <coughs> the thing to do now, consistency is good. The thing to do now, if you're going to keep it for a service, you need to keep it warm, not hot. It'll split or cook. You'll end up with scrambled tarragon eggs. Needs more seasoning. And I'm going to finish it with a little bit of chopped tarragon. Chives I would, but I forgot to ask for them. But I'm going to put a little bit of parsley and some tarragon. Finish it off. Now I'm going to pass it through a fine sieve and then I would keep it warm. Again, rubber spatula. I don't want to push it through too hard. I'll give it a little squeeze. And then I'll put my herbs in. Okay. So Let's pick a little bit of parsley. This is which I've washed and spun a little bit earlier. You can use curly parsley. Um, nothing really wrong with curly parsley, although um, I think it's easier, probably better in flavor. Um, some tarragon I had here. Okay, just the leaves. Um, easier the flat leaf parsley to julienne for some dishes. But really the old curly parsley is still a good fallback. So in Europe, in the growing season, the tarragon growing season, they buy kilos and pick it all and hold it in clip jars under vinegar for their bernays, which goes into then goes into the reduction.
I used to be very, very particular about how I cut herbs. Not actually so much these days, but I'm very particular about how they're stored. That they've been washed and dried and stored properly. And not forgetting a little bit of texture is good. You're not looking for tarragon dust. Okay, so beautiful, beautifully stirred through. Nice. And I've just got the right thing. I could just see this sitting right beside a beautifully slow cooked ribeye. And some coriander flavoured crushed peas. So there's our burn nose. Okay, so the last one we've got for you today is the beurre blanc. Okay, as we saw, we made the reduction earlier on. And this is it basically finished. We just want a little bit. We want to reduce that vinegar and that wine, burn it down, and just finish with a little bit of moisture. Okay, so small pot, which I have here. <laughs> and I'm going to take some of my reduction. Again, we're after the shallots make it all nice and sweet. So we're looking for something that's sweet and sour. Sour from the vinegar. And uh, we're going to enrich our sauce with a little cream. Bring it to the boil, reduce it, take it off, and whisk in. So emulsify our whole butter, as opposed to clarified butter. Uh, interestingly, I have on occasions made Bernays by whisking in whole butter. Um, and uh, Anton Mossman, who you may have heard of, was the chef at the Dorchester when I was in England. He actually uses whole butter for his hollandaise. Diced butter. I don't know. I've had some success, some failures. So don't be afraid to try, though. You learn. It's the best way to learn. OK. So I'm just bringing it up to the boil. OK, I'm going to reduce the cream roughly by half. And then I'll emulsify. Lovely, this is really a lovely um, uh, sauce for grilled fish. So, again, not too fast. You may get all too cold, and then you'll probably have separation. Again, if it gets, if it is too thin and you've reached the flavour that you want, you can, because there's cream in it, you can always add a little bit of uh, arrowroot slurry. But be very, very careful.
Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. So I think at this point it's probably enough. The balance between the vinegar, the shallots, white wine, and the butter needs a bit of salt and pepper. And I'm going to give it a, a wee squeeze of lemon juice. Just to bring out all those flavours. Let me touch more. And once you've uh, monted, monte, this is what we're doing, emulsifying. We're monteing the butter into the liquid. And then, finish. Again, rubber spatula. As I said before, this is a great base sauce. You can do a lot more with it. A nice tomato coolie, spicy tomato coolie, whisk into it. You can add a herb puree like parsley or chives make a puree, a very fine puree, and then whisk it in. And that's a cracking sauce for grilled fish. There we have our beurblanc. Okay, so I'm going to start on one of our um, cream-based sauces. There's a couple of recipes in there. This is fish base. Um, so basically it's a reduction of fish trimmings, shallots, French shallots, mushrooms, uh, white wine, vermouth, reduced down uh, a little bit longer lines of our beef, beef juice. Uh, then um, the fish stock reduced right down almost to a glaze and then cream and then lie, again with some a little bit arrowroot. But uh, Today, um, we don't really use uh, velouté. Um, even bechamel, it's a ne necessary part and it's a necessary skill you need to have. And the, uh, the right things to do with velouté and, and the wrong things to do with velouté. I guess in terms of velouté, um, all I really do is similar process um, but without any flour. And then, um, you know, whether it's vegetables or it then becomes a puree, a thickened puree, um, or it can be a soup, you know. So to me, that's using the velouté knowledge um, and not having to use any flour. Um, in terms of bechamel, there's not a real lot of around of getting around it. Um, the only thing I really use bechamel for, not for Mornay, uh, I use it as a part of a sauce for Mornay, along with hollandaise and whipped cream. So, um, but if you're going to do mac and cheese, you got to know how to do a good bechamel, and not too heavy. So there's uh, ways and means around that, and uh, I think the most important thing is if you're going to do a flour base, you must cook out the roux for at least 20 minutes in the oven. Um, keep it blonde uh, and then slowly add your liquids. Okay, so this is my champagne cream, um, which 
I start off with some shallots, French shallots. I have um, some leeks here uh, from our mirepoix, which I'm going to put a little bit in as well. So you can hear it's he heating up and all that sort of stuff. No colour. We don't want any colour at all. Okay? So a few mushrooms as well. Now I'm just going to what we call sweat. So basically slow cooking. Slow cooking without colour. So there's a little bit of butter in there. And all my vegetables. And I'm just going to be really, really super careful not to get any colour. Because in the end of the day, we want a nice white cream, not brown. This is lemon myrtle. This is, I'm an avid gardener as well. And uh, I love natives. And um, this is uh, Bacchausia citradora, or lemon myrtle. Um, and it has the most unbelievable smell and flavour. Fantastic with fish. Also great with baked whole fish. If you put some in the cavity, um, it'll permeate all the way through. But I'm going to put a little bit into my reduction because I love it so much. And I'll put a little bit in again at the end. So, sautéing nicely. Just starting to soften, but no colour. Anything that you do a reduction in, you must season as you go. As I said before, you can always add. You put too much in, you can't take it out. Okay, so just almost starting to colour, I'm going to put my fish bones or fish trimmings in here, some vermouth, dry, extra dry vermouth. So like um, Cinzano or Remy Martin or Martin, whatever it is, um, it must be extra dry, not Rosso. Um, which is sweeter. Okay, so it must be extra dry, bone dry. Uh, and then some white wine. Beautifully supplied. They actually both of them are supplied by Ballandine. Um, Stanthorpe, beautiful, beautiful wines. Been around for a long time though, um, Ballandine. And uh, so now. I want to, like the red wine, I want to cook down the wine. Then I'll add the fish stock and reduce as well. There we go. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to finish my sauce with some champagne right at the end. Beautiful effervescence. Uh, I did. At one restaurant, one of my restaurants, I used to do a risotto, a vanilla risotto, with Morton Bay bugs. And um, when it went out to the table, we would pour a good champagne over the risotto, which gave it a great depth of flavour, beautiful effervescence, a hint of acidity which went really well with the uh, Morton Bay Bugs. Although one critic did write up the Morton Bay Bug, the Morton, the Morton, the Champagne bugged me. So anyway, it is what it is. Some things are good, some things are not so good. Can't please everybody. Okay, white wine's down, vermouth is down. Now for my fish stock. Now we'll reduce that to almost a glaze. Then we'll add some cream. Check the seasoning, check the lie, and finish it with a little bit of arrowroot, some champagne, a little bit of squeeze of lemon, and some lemon myrtle. 
And I use this in so many dishes um, and have done for years. And I guess of all the sauces I make, this probably gets the best acclaim. Important not to have it too heavy, just nice and light. You don't want a really strong fishy flavour either. It's just you know, it's going to add, like with all sauces, they're a component of a dish. Um, you know, being a saucier is probably one of the highest regard, regarded uh, positions in a traditional kitchen. You're an alchemist. You need to bring together components and that support each other for the best possible end. Okay, so reducing. Uh, I often do this with um, uh, quickly seared barramundi, sea bass. Adds all the hits, all the components. It's light, flavour, a little bit of spice. Great finish. Okay, so lemon myrtle. You just got to really, you've got to rub this. I used to, I had it growing everywhere in my garden and uh, I used to grab the leaves, crush them up and rub them on my skin and keep away mosquitoes and the flies and all that stuff. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. On with the party, eh? Sean's birthday tomorrow, so could be a few glasses tomorrow. Happy birthday. Go on, Sean. Okay. So it's very busily reducing, um, and we're nearly to the point where we'll add the cream. At this point, what I normally do is you can, you know, because you don't know how much fish stock or exactly, there's no exact measurement, um, I always take some out, then I cream it up, I make the amount of sauce I want. And then if it's not strong enough, I add some reduction back in. If it is enough, I keep the reduction for tomorrow. So I'm just going to take out some of the reduction. Now I'll add the cream. Obviously, it needs to come back to the boil. And then I'll have a look. Consistency, taste, seasoning, whether it's strong enough, fish flavor, I can always add some more. Okay, so my slurry, just a little arrowroot and water. Okay. So let's have a little taste. Not enough fish. But that's the whole point in taking some out. You can always put more in. You don't want to end up with 60 litres of fish sauce because you didn't take any out. Keep it fresh. Every day, keep it fresh. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to plunge, turn it down a little bit. I'm going to just check the con consistency. Yeah, it's not really coating, but I really don't need much. So at this point, I'll probably put probably a little bit more than what I want because I'm going to add some lemon juice and I'm going to add some champagne. Much, much nicer. Probably a little bit too thick, but it'll allow for, yeah, that's good. But it'll allow for my champagne and my lemon juice.
And I want a little bit more lemon myrtle because I can't quite get that flavor, that myrtle flavor. So I just want to release the oils and finish off the sauce. Last thing to do is to pass it, obviously. But make sure you're happy. I want to check the seasoning again. I want to check the consistency. Yeah. Coating, just nice. Back of the spoon, as they say. You can taste the champagne, but you cannot taste any seasoning. Just a little bit of sea salt will help bring out all those flavours. And last but not least, if you add some chervil or some chervil stalks, by all means, it's not always in season, but always uh, rich man's parsley, they say. Always beautiful in any, anything fish or chicken. And it's really, although I think, personally, just a touch fishy, fishy. So I'll add a little bit more cream, touch more champagne, turn that up, we'll bring it to the boil, and then we'll pass it. And again, through a nice fine sieve, we'll squeeze some of the juices out of the bones, and more importantly, out of the lemon myrtle. At this point, you could always add a little bit of dry vermouth as well. Helps with the flavors. Dry vermouth is basically like, um, like gin is a botanical. Um, so there's no set recipe. Um, it's a spirit with flavored. And so is um, uh, vermouth. Every vermouth is different. Um, they all have different botanicals. Okay. Don't forget the rubber spatula. Just squeeze those lemon myrtle leaves. We want that oil to come out. See, the best fish stock and fish bones you can have are sold. But a little bit hard, hard up here in Queensland and not really that easy in this country. New Zealand, it's where it's at. Okay, so there's our consistency, just coating. And beautiful. The lemon's just there, the lemon myrtle's just there. It's a stunner. So, hopefully you've learned an amazing amount of knowledge about sauces today from the master here. Some people say king of sauces. You're not, you're not are you? No. I, thought, I think he is, he's great. Very good um, base sauces. Great reductions, great derivatives. Just take us through what, what we did today, Russell, here. Um, so the two jus um, based um, on a reduction of veal stock, a very good veal stock, and Fond de Lea, which is my braised based veal stock, uh, and sauce. Lea, so to yeah. get your as well. Yeah. Okay. So it adds body and texture. So we have the red wine jus, um, which we use a, a red wine reduction, and the cognac and pepper um, jus as well. And then we've got the two whites here. Yeah, then we have the two emulsion sauces. So the Bernays, um, 
which is emulsion, uh, the reduction of shallots, white wine, and tarragon and vinegar. Um, the difference between that and the Berbalonk, um, two to one. So for Bernays, it's two times um, vinegar, one time um, white wine. The opposite for Berbalonk, two times white wine, one time vinegar. And uh, so the Bernays is an egg yolk emulsion, a savion with clarified butter, and the, and the, um, the Berbalonk as um, a monte of whole butter into a liquid. So just for those of you that are, I know that you're all studying with us, but especially first years that are studying their stock soups and sauces with us, Bernays is a base sauce on its own. We could have made a Hollandaise as well. Some people get confused, they think by adding uh, a chervil and tarragon to a Hollandaise it becomes a Bernays, but it's not. It's actually a sauce of its own right. Bernays has derivatives from it, in other words, derived from the base, and so does Hollandaise, so you'll learn those in class with us. And the addition of one or two other ingredients makes it a derivative or a small source. Correct. Yeah, a little different, you've got a protein and a fat emulsifying together here. This one is a reduction that's thickened with butter at the end. So thank you so much for spending the afternoon with us. Thank you. And for driving down from Toowoomba. And um, I'm really sure that you enjoyed this masterclass on sources. So keep watching. I'm sure I can entice Russell to come back again and do some stops with us. And he may even pop into a first year class. So watch out, you guys. It'd be, It'd be good. Trouble. It'd be very good. Yeah, thank you so much. It was great having you. Thank Thanks. You. See you. Thank yeah. you.